We're pulling up the anchor now. We got 10 to 15 knots coming from the southeast. Considering the wind speed, it's probably going to be quite a little lively sail. Okay. Probably shouldn't do this while we're in the middle of pulling up the anchor, but that's okay. What was that? Okay. You gonna raise the main? For those of you that have sailed with your significant other, you already know, not every day is smooth seas and sunshine. One minute you're smiling and the next, well, you're not smiling. It's the honest reality of sailing into the unknown, both on the water and in a relationship. When you're sailing a 12 ton vessel with the wind howling in your ears and sometimes your heart in your throat, in the moment, everything can feel so stressful. But here's the truth. If we just be cool, honey bunny, communicate clearly and release the notion of being right or in control, we will make it through safely. Today, we're sailing from Gould to Dunk Island, just southeast of Mission Beach. We plan on exploring the ruins of an old resort, lose ourselves in the lush rainforest, and hopefully find ways to strengthen our bond on solid ground so we can weather whatever on the ocean. Because sailing doesn't just strip you of your comforts, it strips you bare. It demands truth, exposes all. So we've actually just made the executive decision that we're gonna turn back. We also just had a bit of a row. <laughs> Yeah, it's alright. This is just this is just sailing. <laughs> Everything worked out pretty well that we never went. We started sort of gusting up to 30 knots last night. There's no hiding your frustrations or bad moods. They come out like rogue waves if you let them. But here's the beautiful part. If you can sail together, live together and still laugh or at least not plot mutiny, you can handle anything life throws at you. Happily Ever After isn't a fairy tale. It's a choice that you make every day to make respect and love for your partner a priority. Romance, lovemaking, adventure, comfort, all of those things are the icing, but unconditional love is the cake. No prop wrap or anything. Ah, always something to worry about. But, but, we shouldn't. <laughs> We've just brought the tender over to Gould Island and we're doing a little bit of movement and exercise or trying to. Phoebe has um, decreased the population of horseflies on Gould Island by about 70% already. She probably killed about 20 horseflies. She's just getting absolutely destroyed by them. As you can see, <laughs> it's, um, it's not funny at all, but I'm finding it a little bit funny. I know you've killed probably about 50 I reckon. This is the funniest part right here. <laughs> I can hear him, I can hear them. You, you must be consuming their energy now that you've killed so many of them. There it is, there's another one. The last one. Oh wait, that's a bee. Oh, that's nice. They were actually all bees. <laughs> <laughs> and then I gotta make sure I squash them properly. <laughs> Should take us about three hours to get there. We're a little bit concerned. Not concerned, but we're just hoping that it's not gonna to be too rolly there. Apparently Dunk Island doesn't have the best protection because it's exposed to swell from all sides. What? Yep. <laughs> but I'm just grateful to be sailing and not motoring. <laughs> okay, you gonna raise the main? Oh. This stops our boom from swinging around when we're sleeping and when we're at anchor. Shh. Yep. Yep. It's, yeah, okay.
So we're actually turning back to our anchorage and we're going to put the anchor down again and actually pack up the tender because the tender, the nose of the tender is um, burying under waves and it's getting water in it. We should have really packed it up, but we haven't really had any issues with it before. A bit annoying, but better than losing our tender. It's stuck in irons. <laughs> awesome. Be good to know how much wind gust that is because that looks like pretty good. Yeah, it does. Okay, so it's gusting up to 18, averaging 13 and a half. We've actually just made the executive decision that we're going to turn back and um, we're going to stay anchored at Gould tonight because it's already 20 past two. It's going to take us three hours to get there. We'll be arriving at sunset which is never really ideal to be arriving at an anchorage after dark or darkish. Um, we also just had a bit of a row. <laughs> and I had a cry. So we're just not sure that sailing in these conditions is going to be ideal. We should have um, packed the tender up, hey? We like, should have packed, yeah, that's I mean, okay. I, I told Phoebe and Phoebe's watching it and then, and then what happened was that... The, oh. The tender surfs down a, a swell, but then it because it, it has such weird edges, it it, it surfs and and cuts and, and it it carves <laughs> goes sideways, yeah. And then as it's carving, the nose dips in, and then as the nose dips in, the stern lifts, and then the wind is lifting and getting under the stern, so the gunnel's almost in the water. And if we flip it, it'll just be it'll be pretty bad because we will lose the all that's in it. It's just not good. I reckon it would it would. It would capsize and then it would act as a big road, like a weight in the water. And if the painter didn't snap and we depowered the boat quick enough, we'd be able to get in and probably re-right um, it. But then it would um, also, then, yeah, then you'd have to empty the whole thing, bail the whole thing out. And it's just something we don't want to do. It was stupid. I should have packed it up. It's a two hour passage, a three hour passage, but. That's why, it's because it's just a bit of a, like, We'd prefer to rock up to an anchorage, still have a little bit of light left, and then go to land and watch the sunset kind of vibe. Um, and so pack up the tender, it just takes, or setting up the tender, it just takes time. Um, but in these conditions, it was silly to think that we could just tow it behind, but that's okay. It's, we're leaving too late in the day to be, yeah, it's all right. This is just, this is just sailing. Pack the tender off the salvo and be ready to go. <laughs> okay. up and it was just like which yeah it was just i didn't yeah I we, didn't weren't, well. we weren't communicating well and oops. so we don't often do this because we genuinely don't have time it's funny because we were sitting here thinking of games to play or questions to ask each other and we were like this is what people think that we do all the time just sitting around nowhere to be but we're actually doing that today. This is our beautiful art box that we got from Aldi, pretty sure. And we've cracked her open quite a few times. We've used a lot of the paint, a lot of the oil pastels. So I made a big bowl of popcorn. Um, we decided to draw pictures for each other and then color them in, like swap them and color them in. So this is the one that, before we color it in, we want to show you. This is one that Josh drew for me. We're not very good at art. That's why we like to do it. And this is one I drew for Josh. <laughs> snorkeling at the Great Barrier Reef. So now we just have to add color. Color. Yeah, this is a nice thing we can do together and connect because we had a little bit of a... <gasps> uh, what would you call it? Altercation? Yeah, ma major disagreement? No, I don't know. Not really. I just didn't... a saddening. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so now, now I gotta get close again. Yeah. Snacks are finished. Pencils are depleted. Colorings are done. I like this one. Loved coloring it in. Josh is the reason that we we're now on pencil rations. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're just together again, <laughs> just like that. Healed. Healed. <laughs> oh. It's the next day. Hello. Hello. Take two. From where? Yesterday. 
We're sailing to Dunk Island this morning. It was really windy and it's um, calmed down a little bit now. The sun's out, so it should be a nice little sail. Yeah, the sun's out. It was a cloudy, rainy morning and really, really windy night. So everything worked out pretty well that we never went. We're sort of gusting up to 30 knots last night. We've got the boat ready inside and we're gonna have a nice, enjoyable, passionate, cruisy sail <laughs> over to Dunk Island. Gonna trawl all the way and I'm, I'm absolutely sure we're gonna catch a fish. Hopefully uh, not a cooter. Hopefully not a barracuda. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna do a little tuck in the main and we'll put the headsail up as well and just power on over. for us to film us hoisting the sails and everything now that our GoPro stick has snapped. So I didn't get to show you that one, but we got the main up and we got the headsail up. I must say it's been quite a pleasant sail. We're still doing uh, five knots now, even in the lee of these islands. We're sort of averaging five and a half, six most of the way. The sea state was a little bit wobbly. And to be completely honest with you, I've been feeling quite anxious about sailing for some reason. Lately, bit, you have been. Lately, yeah. yeah. Um, Before every sail, there's always been a little bit of tension. Anxiety, yeah. There's some really cool hikes on this island too. There's one that goes for uh, 7Ks, a nice short little 7K one. Do a little hike today because we haven't really been able to move our bodies much being in that little anchorage that we were in, in, in Gould, I think. And there's hot showers apparently, public hot showers. So I'm super keen for that because I had, I had, I did a workout in the galley today because we were so low on water. I had, I showered in a cup of water. So I'm excited to have a hot, hot shower with running water. Telltale up there is streaming back nicely too. It's falling a little bit. So maybe we need to trim that sail a bit. Hi little sleeping dog. Aww. Okay. That would have freaked him out. That is the biggest turtle I've ever seen. Does that look like a dugong? Dude, it was a turtle. Are you serious? I'm so serious right now. Oh, that is so cute. Back to it. <laughs> This mooring will quite literally be nosing into the wind the whole time but it also means that i got to approach this mooring ball with a bit of power because the, the wind's going to be pushing us off it. I've got the throttle up, I'm just going to see how we approach it. Ball stuck on that side. Oh, who knows? Maybe the keel? I don't know. Oh, look, there it is. <laughs> Maybe don't pull it so hard. Me being like, this is such a great way to approach. I think the shackle's actually stuck under the keel, perhaps, because the mooring ball's not coming back around the side, so around the front. So we're going to throw it off, drift off, and then approach it again. See ya. Wait till it's 10 meters away. Wait till it's 10 meters away and then you can have another go driving up onto a boat. Okay. Not so much heat this time. Ooh. 
in neutral with enough time, but obviously I didn't. But that's okay. <laughs> I don't get the opportunity to do this often. Usually I'm the one pulling up the um, mooring line, so yeah. So yeah, no, lots to learn as always. Okay, let's try this again. He's on. Try to approach it this time with the mooring ball on our starboard side so that we'd be blown off it rather than blown onto it and then that's what happened. Um, I think maybe the line got stuck under the keel or something because it wasn't really pulling out. That's okay, no damage done. Lost a bit of anti-foul. No prop wrap or anything. <sighs> all all, well. all, 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 always something to worry about. But, but, we shouldn't. <laughs> Tell the bush turkeys have been through here. It's very raked and pruned. <laughs> there's the mound just down there. Oh, good spotting. Yeah, there's its nest. So they build this huge nest out of all these leaves, and then the heat from all the le decomposing leaves creates heat, so it incubates the eggs for them. <laughs> they're so funny. Like you'll be walking along a track and you'll get sprayed by leaves and dirt because they're. They flick it and they rake the whole land and then make this big pile of leaves. But it's so convenient because they clear the paths for the funniest little... You know, it's convenient for them as well because they don't have to do any parenting. The no hatch no sitting on eggs or anything. Yeah, but they don't even raise their yeah. chicks. Babies are out there all alone on their own. I've never seen a baby bush turkey, but... I have, it's bloody cute. <laughs> but um, they must be having them or they must be surviving because there's bush turkeys everywhere. Scrub turkeys, whatever. And this is what it's like <laughs> before the turkeys get at it. <laughs> There's also a lot of um, cane toads up here, but Josh made the point of saying that they probably came over on the barges and stuff because there's beautiful resorts here, so they would have had to build build them. He's been taking it upon himself to dispose of them. Because for those who don't live in Australia, cane toads are an introduced species. They eat small frogs and small little mammals, marsupials, the biggest birds. Thing, the biggest thing is that native animals eat the cane toads and cane toads have poison in them. So then when the native animal eats a mature cane toad, there's enough poison to kill them. So it doesn't allow that native animal the chance to live from the poison and be like, oh, wow, I got really sick from eating that animal. Yeah. I'm not going to eat it again. And then pass on that knowledge. Pass that knowledge on through their generations and genealogy and stuff. As the cane toads spread around Australia, obviously the biggest ones are at the front of the wave. So the largest cane toads are the ones that native animals are seeing first. They're the ones that they're eating first and dying from. So it's a really um, significant problem because they've basically spread around almost all of Australia now, considering that they were introduced into Queensland to eat the cane beetle and now for the cane farms everywhere if you're a kid growing up you probably have visions of your dad whacking cane toads with golf clubs or pouring salt on them or just like really sad stuff and I understand that it's for the benefit of the environment but at the end of the day they're still little beings that were brought over here unwillingly and now they're being slaughtered it's horrible so anyways my dad would just collect them in a plastic bag and he would just put them in the freezer because we had this big freezer downstairs 
on the bot on the bottom patio and I was living in a granny flat down there. Anyways, I had my girlfriend staying over one night and I slept with the door open. I just walked in a spider web. <laughs> one night we're lying in bed and it's like it's like midnight and I can hear this rustling and I hit Chelsea and I was like, Chelsea, Chelsea, there's someone in the room. We we're both lying there. I was like, shh, we can hear this rustling. She's like, it's coming closer. We're freaking out, we're lying there clutching each other. And then we feel this plastic bag rustle and jump onto the edge of our, on the end of our bed, onto our feet, and we're screaming, turn the light on. Dad had emptied out the freezer to defrost it, pulled all the bags of the cane toads there that evening. The cane toads had thawed out overnight. Well, this, this bag of cane toads had thawed out overnight and had come back alive and had jumped into our room. It was so scary and so bewildering. I'd never had no idea that, that cane toads could do that. Cool. Come, look at this. Come, come. Look how beautiful the end of this log is. Oh. It's like a full ecosystem. Little, little habitat. Yeah. It's Over. everywhere, really. <laughs> we thought this was pretty cool. Rainforest. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Ocean. Nice one! Wait! Oh! <laughs> Let me get the straw. So much liquid in these ones too. Yeah, bugger on meat too. Mm. They're actually perfect. That's why there's so much liquid in them. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <laughs> Four down. Oh! Would you like Four and a half. Would you like another? Uh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm genuinely concerned about how I'm going to fit it in, but I'll try. Ladies and gentlemen, this is coconut number three. Unch, unch, unch. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Josh is out here killing all the horse flies. <laughs> He's climbing up the tree, getting coconut nuts. Because I'd do it, but I really don't want to. <laughs> As these are so green and there's no flesh in them i'm opening them in a really easy way but before i used to sort of husk the whole thing all the way around and then knock the top off it with the intention of being able to eat the meat in the end yeah we're it's just a... slaughtering these ones. <laughs> yeah, <really just. laughs> real viking Savaging style them, yeah. yeah yeah no we're just completely scalping Whoa. them sucking the juices out and then but it's an efficient way of doing it and there's no meat in them so Hopefully the earth will just reclaim these beautiful fruit and hopefully these trees enjoy the vitamins. The will reclaim them first. Oh, oh yeah, true. Look how high the tide comes up at night. I don't think I can finish mine. What? Wait, I'm just going to have one more and that's it. I couldn't have enough. Oh, okay, one more. I'm going to have one more and then that'll be it. Wish I had a longer torso like you do. <laughs> You're so beautiful. I'm not going to put stuff like that in there. Okay. It's still nice to see it. We're just saying like how swollen we feel. <laughs> Josh is like, yeah, look how big my stomach is. And I was like, f*** off. You look the exact same, but look at his... <laughs> what happens when you eat four too many coconuts? If you were stuck on this island alone with Bear girls, oh. he would see oh. <laughs> poke a hole in your stomach and drink out the fluid. Oh. Oh, don't mind if I do.
just brought the tender over to Mound Island, which is just this tiny little island, a little bit north of Dunk. But because we're going to be spending the next week up in Hinchinbrook and around those surrounding areas with no coconut cheese, we're going to stock up today on this island so that we've got some to remember our travels by. There's going to be less and less coconut cheese as we begin to head back home. So yeah, we're going to we're going to miss being able to do this a lot. Which one? Which one? Josh just said home or south. <laughs> Very true. Home is wherever I'm with you. Wow, this is magical. I love the floor on this island. That was the tallest tree Josh has ever climbed. <laughs> yeah. He used to be a little bit nervous with heights as well. It's, it's so cool that you've been able to heal that food. Coconut climbing. Getting <laughs> <laughs> Josh climbed into the foliage. Now he's going to get out. Oh my gosh, so many marsh flies. Well done! Did I? Yeah, baby. Are you, are you, why are you asking me? Are you alright? Right. Oh yeah, I did get a little bit of that funky foliage in my eye, but that's least of my worries right now. Okay, now I worry about it. Enough? <laughs> It's so nice to have gone for a romantic walk along this beach this morning for our passage. Ground, so. <laughs> yeah, we'd be walking like this. <laughs> Come on, Beth, let's go. Well, that's it from us this week. We're really excited about the episode next week. We're catching up with a bloody great mate of ours on the inside of Hinchinbrook Island, chasing the elusive barramundi and getting our toes running in the croc-infested waters. Do we go swimming in the croc-infested waters? Yes, we do. Yes, we do.